Okay, our uh, next speaker is Xiang Dong Ji from uh, Shanghai University, who will cover the Panda X dark matter search. So I'll let him take it away. Okay, uh, so in my talk, I'm going to tell you a story about the Panda X dark matter search experiment in uh, Jinping Underground Lab, uh, which is in the deep mountains of Sichuan province. I thank the organizer of this conference, uh, invite me to give this talk, and it's an honor to uh, present our uh, recent results in, in here. Um, so here's an outline of my talk. I'm going to start with a, a small introduction to uh, WIMP search and liquid, dark, uh, liquid xenon experiments. And then I will discuss the PENX experiment in, in Jinping Underground Lab. I show you some of the, our previous published results from PENX. Uh, in the final part of my talk, I will show you our 2017 data and preliminary physics analysis. And finally, I will give you uh, our future plans for the experiment. Now, after 30 years of uh, direct detection experiments and over five orders magnitude improvement in detection sensitivity, the WIMPs are still at large. And we notice that the theorists are getting very impatient. However, let me remind you that several points. First of all, that as in previous uh, speaker have discussed, that there are emerging uh, signals uh, from AMS2 and also DAMPI. Uh, in the TEV region, there are uh, mysterious accesses. And second point is that despite our heroic improvement in experiments, that their sensitivity so far only cover part, very small part of the uh, theoretic predictions. And if you look at the, the typical theory predictions in this uh, uh, mass and cross-section plan, you can see that just began to uh, reach uh, into deep regions of the theory predictions. And in fact, uh, we're th still three orders of magnet away from the neutrino floor. So there's a lot to do for the experiment um, before concluding that dark matter um, direct detection is over. Now, Xenon experiments has been the leading um, sort of experiment in direct detection for a number of reasons. First of all, the xenon has no long-lived radioactive isotopes that contaminates uh, the target. And in fact, uh, there, there may be the xenon 136 double bit decay and a radon problem, but so far at the town scale, we have not seen uh, it produces uh, uh, you know, a uh, stopper for, uh, for the experiment. And also the xenon new phase technology measured both scintillation and charges, allowing excellent self-shielding and exploiting the electric uh, and, and nuclear recoil differences. So it really uh, is a great technology allowing you to distinguish the signals from background. And in fact, starting from 10 kilogram, and the experiment I haven't gone to 100 kilogram, 250, 500 kilograms, and two tons. So the scale of the experiment have keep going up. And in fact, the LZ experiment is planned for seven ton experiment. And in fact, there are speculations on the 30 ton and 100 ton experiment. So we have seen no problem that try to scaling this experiment up to, let's, let's say, 100 ton scale. Now here is a slide to show you uh, how this technology works. And so this is a typical xenon TPC with uh, PMTs in the top and bottom of the detector. And also there are electrodes set up a uh, strong power electric fields. And so when WIMP scatter with one of the uh, xenon atom, it produces a recoiled uh, nuclei and, and then produces the light and that scintillation and also free, free charges. And the free charges will drift on the electric field to the top of the liquid and produce another flash of light. We call it the S2 signal. 
So therefore, each of these events produces the S1 and S2 signal, and using the time difference and also the light pattern for the S2, we can pinpoint the 3D locations of the events, which is actually critical for us to fiducialize the um, target region. And then moreover, the ratio between S1 and S2 were telling us um, the characteristic differences between the radioactivity and the nuclear recoils. Now there are three big experiment collaborations in the world in the xenon business. Uh, first of all, there's, there's xenon collaboration led by Columbia University, joined by a few inst other institutions in the U.S. and also have a large European participations uh, funded by uh, NSF, NS and the European agencies. Uh, they have gone through Xenon 10, Xenon 100, Xenon 1 ton. They're working on this, but they're also planning for Xenon N ton. And then Lux Zeppelin collaboration, mainly U.S. and British institutions, funded by DOE. And the Lux experiment, 250 kilogram, uh, has been uh, concluded. It's a uh, mission, and they're busily preparing for the LZ seven ton experiment. And PENX collaboration, mainly led by Shanghai Jiao Tong University and, and collaborating with other institutions in China. And we've been we have finished PENA one and, pen and working on the PENA two, but we're also looking into the PEN four ton and 30 ton experiment. Now here's a little more detail on the Lux experiment. In fact, uh, starting from 2006 till 2016 is a 10 year uh, program and finished the last year. And so this is the last data they've published. And they had about uh, 400 days of data taking and the, the limit, the best limit they obtained for 50 GeV went is one time 10 to the minus six, so minus 46 centimeters squares. And uh, in fact, their spin dependent uh, cross sections are still the best in the literature. And uh, so this is a, a, a very important US um, uh, experiment in US soil and has been in various occasions leading the uh, WIMP searches. Now Xenon one time, first results have been published. In fact, there's a talk tomorrow afternoon. And this has a, a TPC, a larger size TPC with 96 times uh, 97 centimeter uh, as a cylinder. And the active liquid xenon target area has two tons of xenon. And um, they have the world leading background level. It's uh, 0.2, what we call the milli, uh, uh, yeah, excuse me, uh, 0.2 milli events per day per kilogram per keV. And the first results coming out is uh, 34.2 days uh, with uh, about one ton of Fidoshu target. And they have reached a uh, minimal uh, detection limit, 4.7 times 10 to the minus 47 centimeters square. So this is the, the preprint results, uh, which hasn't shown up in the uh, published journal yet. Um, it will be very soon. And so this is the best uh, detection limit uh, appeared in uh, uh, literature so far. So now let me uh, switch gear to talk about the PEN-X experiment and Jimbing Underground Lab. The PEN-X collaboration was started in 2009. And as I said, the Shanghai Jiao Tong University is the leading experiment but joined by the Peking University, Sandong University, and other institutions. And there are about 50 people in the collaboration. And the experiment is uh, in the southwest of Chengdu, which is the capital of the Sichuan province. Uh, it's in the deep mountains. And this is the place called the Xishan. That's where, the, uh, ch where China launches satellite most of, a lot of times. And we're about two hour drive from there. And our lab is over there. The mountain is extremely tall and has uh, the deep, deepest, probably, uh, tunnel. Uh, this is uh, about 17 kilometers, and so we're in the middle of this tunnel, and the distance to the top of the mountain is 
2.4 kilometers. And so this is currently the world's deepest underground lab. So PANX stands for Particle and Astrophysical Xenon Experiment. And phase one is a 120 kilogram uh, experiment and started in 2009, ended in 2014. Phase two, 500 kilogram scale experiments start 2014 and uh, still currently running. We have plans for, uh, for the future as well. Uh, gonna tell you a little bit later. Uh, our first uh, access to the experimental site is actually in August 16, 2012. We're moving our ex equipment from Shanghai to, uh, this is about 3,000 3, kilometers away from Shanghai. And so we uh, delivered the equipment there in the 2012. And this is the setup that we have in the uh, underground lab. And uh, so the first results from the Pan-X-1. And uh, this is the, uh, the detector that we built. And it's about 100 kilogram scale. And we produce a detection limit. And that published in 2014. And although it's not a world leading experiment, but at that time we learned how to work with the xenon detectors. And it also we excluded all the previous uh, um, reported uh, claims for the dark matter, uh, uh, suspected dark matter events. So we quickly move on to upgrading our detector to 500 kilogram. And this is 60 centimeters in diameter and 60 centimeters tall. And this is the final product of detector. And then actually the, uh, in the sensitive area, there are about 580 kilogram of liquid xenon. And we, we first used these three inch PMTs, it's about 110 of them. Um, so this is showing you that we uh, put them together, our detector. In fact, when we built in this detector, this is actually the largest in the world in, in that time. Um, so this is showing you some of the configura running configurations. As I told you before that we use multiple grids to produce strong electric fields, and this is the, this is the cathode electrode, and this is the gate, and then there's the anode. And there's a strong electric fields on the gate and to produce the uh, scintillation light from the electrons. And the, this, uh, the electric field that should try to drift the electrons. So this is the running condition for run nine and run 10. Run nine is the data that we published actually last year, just, just about a year ago. So this is showing you the, a little bit of the running history of the PANA experiment and PANA 2 experiment. And we, in fact, started commissioning this um, in the 2000, later 2015. And in the early 2016, we had a three months of running and we accumulated about 26.2 ton days of data. And the results was uh, published uh, September last year. And then since then that we had calibration runs and attrition removal. And we also had a, a distillation campaign to further reduce the background. And we accumulated uh, since then the 77 days of data uh, with uh, 27.9 ton days of exposure. And if we add together, this will be the largest report of documented exposure to date. And this is showing you our run nine uh, results. And so this is the, uh, the detection limit that we produced last year, this red curve. This is the WIMP, again, the WIMP mass and, and cross section. And that time when we published in September, that's a world leading result. And in fact, it was published as a PRL cover article. The cover showing our detector. And we also produced a spin dependent limit and it, which appeared early this year uh, in PRL, and this is probably still uh, a, one of the leading uh, neutron, um, neutron uh, scattering cross sections. Uh, recently, we also released results from the analysis on the axion search. And uh, through the two gamma coupling with electrons, the, we, the, the axion can, uh, produce the electron recoil, so we can look at the electron recoil to get a, um, a axion-electron coupling. 
uh, either from the solar axion or from galactic axions. Due to time limitation, I'm not going to go to the results in detail, but if you have questions, I can explain later. Uh, this is the results that we have not published yet, and actually the first showing in public is the uh, inelastic dark matter limits. And there are theorists who are interested in uh, looking into the limits on the inelastic dark matter possibilities. And then the horizontal axis is showing you the splitting between the <coughs> ground state and, and the excited state of dark matter uh, in the scale of uh, KEVs. And then we plot the results all the way up to 300 KEV. And this is the best cross-section limits. And uh, so here I showcase the 1 TeV dark matter, and this is the 10 TeV dark matter limits. Okay. We're going to have this uh, appear in the preprint very soon. Now, in the final 10 minutes, I'm going to discuss the 2017 new data and the results. Uh, in this second rung of our uh, detector, we have made several improvements. And first of all, we improved our trigger threshold. And then now our trigger threshold is lower than last year. And we also have a channel by channel single photoelectron efficiency. And we improved the detectors, the electron recall, nu nu nuclear recall response models. And we also have a 2.5 times reduction in total background. And in fact, we had a six times reduction in the Krypton-85 background. We also had a three times reduction in the accidental rates. And we have 13 times reduction in the Xenon-126, which was activated by cosmic ray. And here showing you the uh, electron recoil calibration. In fact, we got a huge uh, data set. There's 8,000 events here on low energy electron recoil. And uh, this is from the attrition uh, calibration. And so this is give us extremely good handles on the, you know, the signatures of background. And this is our uh, AMBI calibration. Basically, it's a nuclear recoil calibrations what the WIMP signal is going to look like in our detectors. And so there's those events that were analyzed uh, by Monte Carlo, uh, well, ma compared with the Monte Carlo simulations. And we believe now we have reached extremely good understanding of the, of the neutron calibrations, both in terms of the band medium and the band RMS. So this is showing you the background control. And I told you that we had a Xenon 137, considerably reduced, simply because you know, it decays pretty fast. And so now we don't see the traces of uh, Xenon 127. And we do have a attrition background coming from our calibration. OK, because this is one of the problems. You know, we use attrition to calibrate, but it sticks in there. Um, we have a Krypton-85 reduced considerably. We also have a radon background. Uh, we have the detector the, uh, due to the uh, leakages of uh, the electron recoil events. We also have the solid neutrino events, well, which is small, still small. And we also have the double bed decay uh, background, which is also small. But adding together that our um, run 10 background is 0.79 milliDRU, and compared to the run 9 is 1.95, so we reduced by this 2.5 times. So in run 10, we have accumulated, uh, let's say, 18 million events in total, and out of which, if we set a window cut, we only look at the small, low energy region, we will have 112 thousand events, OK? And so in the next slide, I'm going to show you where these 112,000 events are located. And so this is a typical plot of the TPC geometry. And this is the radius squared. And this is the vertical Z dimension. And as you can see that most of the events are localized on the surface, OK? And so that's why that. Uh, this fiducialized, this 3D 
uh, position reconstruction is so great for this kind of a detector. And also Z9 is self-shielding. It stops most of the, of the background, okay, at the surface. And um, so these are the, this is the event distribution in uh, R square, and, and this is also the, in terms of the uh, phi uh, distribution, okay? So look at the different places uh, from the top, and you can see, again, the, all the events are accumulated uh, around the edge of the uh, detector. And so what we do is we select a region in the middle that is the most clean, all right? And so we have this uh, virtual a uh, dash line here, and this is a cylinder. You can have other choices if you like. And so we just choose a cylinder in the middle that, uh, so this is the clean region that we're gonna decide to use region to search for dark matter. And if we made this cut, then there's only 177 events in our detector, okay? So this is 177 events plot it in terms of the, the light, and this is the charge to light ratio. And so then in this two dimensional plot and see the, the blue curve here showing the central line where the, the reactivity events should lie. And the red curve showing where the, the dark matter events where the center of the dark matter events should lie, all right? And so you can see that most of the events is indeed coming from reactivity, all right? And in fact, we can Monte Carlo, you know, using the, all the, um, the reactivities in our detected components, we can Monte Carlo where um, those uh, events come from. In fact, this is a comparison between the, the Monte Carlo and, and with data the Monte Carlo is the red curve, and those dots are actually the uh, data, and this is in terms of the energy in KeV. And so you can see that all the, the, two, the 177 events are modeled very well by uh, Monte Carlo simulations, all right? So in order to get the detection limits for WIMPs, so what we do is we're gonna try to make an standard statistical analysis, all right? We have, uh, in fact, we have a combined run nine and run 10 together to make this analysis. We uh, construct the standard likelihood function uh, with the background, with known background, and then we fit to the data. So here's the results. And um, so again, this is horizontal line is the wind mass. This is the cross section. And the total exposure is a 54.1 ton day, so this is the largest exposure so far. And uh, so the green band is the, um, the um, detection sensitivity, and we are expecting two events below. In fact, we're ex using our uh, using our Background analysis, we expect in two events below the red line, but we haven't seen any. And so therefore that somehow we have a lucky downward fluctuations, and so that allows us to, to put a very uh, stringent limits. And this limit here, the lowest is around the 45 uh, GeV. The cross section is around the six times uh, 10 to the minus 47, and this is the best uh, detection limit so far. But if you look at the TEV region, and this detection sensitivity is about, about twice um, as good as, as the uh, Xenon one ton result published earlier, and, uh, but we're not 10 to the minus 47 yet. We're around 10 to the minus 45. So it was still two or three order magnitude to, to, uh, to, uh, to get into region where Nima is gonna be interested in. Uh, Still, this is the best limit so far. Okay, so the Panex future. Uh, in fact, we are going to move into a new experimental locations, um, if, and we're already starting work in there. In fact, the Jinping Lab is undergoing extremely uh, significant expansion. There are going to be eight experimental halls 
There are 14 times 14 times 65, and uh, we're located at one of these halls called the B2, and we already had a big uh, water pool dug in the, in the, on the experimental site. In fact, here is showing you that the construction of the water pool and, uh, and uh, our experimental hall. And uh, we're working on a Panax four-ton experiment. It was a four-ton target, and hopefully we're going to reach the best sensitivity around 10 to minus 48. And we have the uh, design of the um, TPC and also the design uh, of the lab. And we're hoping that we can try to get the on-site assembly and commission around 2019 and 2020, and similar to uh, LZ and, and uh, Xenon Anton scale. Our goal is actually eventually goes to, the, uh, to do the first generation three Xenon document experiment that is a 30 ton experiment in which you can reach to the, the neutrino floor sensitivity. All right, so let me conclude. My time is up. So my main point is that searching is far from over, okay? And we're still having three orders of magnitude to, to improve, and I don't see there's any showstopper for us to reach there. And PENX experiment since 2012 has gone through two generations of detectors, improving detection sensitivity by almost three orders of, orders of magnitude by itself. The most recent result has the world largest exp uh, exposure with 54 ton day, setting currently a leading WEMP detection sensitivity, particularly at TEV scale. I think that our, our detector is pretty particularly sensitive at TEV scale. Uh, however, the best limit is already, you know, starting at 10 to minus 47, and PENX will continue. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any questions? So, overall, oh, sorry, right there. I uh, can't see in the lights. Yeah. So, on slide 23, you showed an inelastic dark matter search, which I think is very exciting because uh, it's secretly a, a search for the genos with uh, geno and mean masses decoupled. Uh -huh. Oh, thank you. Um, and what I'm wondering is, uh, what recoil energy have you guys calibrated out to? So how high in recoil energies are you guys analyzing? I think we're up to maybe 50 kV. Well, oh. we can go potentially go to 100 kV. And, and uh, so, so this is, uh, this is a larger recoil energy than we usually publish. So yeah. this is the first time actually we look at it beyond uh, our usual dark matter search window. And we're looking at 50 kV recoils. Right, so Xenon recently went out to 240, um, but actually the best would be to go to 500 or 1,000 kV. Uh, and I realize that might be asking a lot in terms of calibration and analysis, but it would actually give you the, the best bound on this. We do do uh, simulations, uh, Monte Carlo simulation, all the events up to, uh, uh, you know, hundreds of kVs. We do do that. Okay. And uh, the data is out there. We can, you know, we're happy to look into that. Great. If you're <laughs> yeah, please. Okay, sure. <laughs> I'll talk to you. Later. Any other questions? Is that, uh, uh, one one quick thing. Um, you talked a lot about different models, uh, methods of rejecting background. On the other hand, over you know the past few years, we actually label the names of these direct detection experiments by the total mass of the experiment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Going down the next two orders of magnitude, trying to hit the neutrino floor, mm -hmm. what's going to be the more important factor and what's going to eventually win out? Is it just pure mass or new mo uh, novel methods of background rejection? Um, actually, the detection sensitivity depends on both on the mass and the background. So if your background is not reduced, the increase in mass is not going to help you. So which means the challenges get stiffer as you go to bigger mass. For example, that or um, the krypton uh, in, in uh, contamination in the xenon, uh, we, have, we believe we have to go to like 0.01 PPT level. So we're keeping, you know, trying to distill, to distill the xenons and so therefore there's less of this radioactivity. I think the other issues, for example, is the radon. And the radon has not shown a, you know, biggest showstopper so far, but it will be if we get to 
the LZ scale or 30 ton scale. And in fact, that the various kind of groups and, and the LZ and, and xenon, they're also developing now the, Z, the radon removal technologies and, and try to uh, make it better. But if you can make the you know, radon and krypton very clean, and because of the, um, the, the, the xenon has a uh, self-shooting property, so you can always hide in the middle of the, your detector, so therefore the other things don't go in. But the, the kryptons and radons will be in the middle of the detector, so you can't really get rid of. So those are the critical uh, issues that it will have to address. Thank you. Um, any other questions? If not, let's uh, thank our speaker again.